Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy Emery Show Guapo, man. Street Certified News. And we back with another one. So, this story really wasn't something that I wanted to cover right now because it's still ongoing. And I really wanted to do more research and kind of wait for things to settle out before we cover this story. Today, I woke up and I and I and I was hit with this headline and it it, it really grabbed me and it made me do my research and, and it made me look into where are these stories coming from who's the source of the information and are these people able to be trusted the story of course was west coast manager whack 100 claims Pooh shiesty is snitching on his two co-defendants so when I saw that thing, man, I said, oh my God, this dude Wack 100 is back at it again. It did inspire me to go and do my research and check it out. And I looked into some things. Um, before I did that, though, I listened to the full Clubhouse audio where Wack 100 and another gentleman are uh, breaking down why they believe Pooh Shiesty is a snitch. We would like to put out there that Pooh Shiesty sentencing is April 7th, 2022. He just pled guilty January 4th, 2022. And when you plead guilty, in that guilty plea, um, they release a proffer, a factual statement. Um, it goes with your guilty plea that usually you have to sign it. And that is what the government alleges crimes you committed is what you're pleading guilty to. Um, that's really important. And we're going to get to that. I really first want to start off with we really got to see where are we getting our information from? Um, the uh, a, a lot of people, you know, call WAC 100. Oh, he an OG and he this, he that. Uh, WAC 100 got into the game as a manager. He was a manager for the rapper the game. Um, as the game started to slow down, he picked up other artists like Blueface. And as of last year, he's currently managing, you know, the biggest rat in hip hop, Takashi Six Nine. He's made other questionable calls and done other weird things in these past 12 months, you know, from dissing rappers to getting into arguments with rappers to accusing uh, Roddy Rich of false flagging his set. And uh, all of these things have basically been proven to be untrue. That was the first thought I had when I when I saw that headline was that, OK, whack 100 is back at it again, doing some more whack stuff, getting into the case. Um, like I said, I didn't want to do this right now, but justice.gov went on justice.gov. Um, on January 4th, the United States government, Southern District of Florida, released a press release that mirrored the proffer statement of facts. Uh, it was on the same day as the guilty plea, and it was basically, you know, the United States uh, high-fiving themselves about getting this guilty plea. We're going to pull it up, man, because it actually says something very important that leads me to believe that either WAC 100 um, doesn't understand legal proceedings and he's kind of taking one tidbit of information and applying it to like a very broad word, snitch rat, that's a big word, and he's taking something very small and applying it to that, or... Uh, he's just gravely misleading people, you know, to get publicity for himself. Either way, we don't condone that type of stuff at Street Certified News. We want to tell you guys the news. We'll wait for everything to play out before we really give y'all our take on it. We're not going to run around here and just throw labels on people so that you guys watch our videos or talk about us. That's not what this thing is about. Getting into this Pooh Shiesty case, man, we're going to pull up uh, Southern District of Florida uh, United States government press release uh, And this is what they say On January 4th Rapper Pooh Shiesty pleads guilty To federal conspiracy charge Miami, Florida Today, Tennessee rapper Lontrell D. Williams Jr. A.K.A. Pooh Shiesty Pled guilty to conspiring to possess firearms In furtherance of crimes of violence And drug trafficking as a part of the plea, Williams Jr. admitted to participating in the conspiracy on the following three occasions. The first was January 7th, 2020 in Memphis, Tennessee. The second was October 9th, 2020 in Bay Harbor Islands, Florida. And the third was May 30th, 2021 in Miami, Florida. In the press release, it says that Williams Jr. admitted to participating in the conspiracy on the following three occasions. So when Pooh Shiesty first got arrested, um, people, some people thought, oh, you know, he shot somebody or, 
oh, he had guns, he had drugs. People thought he was being arrested really for like a specific crime. What the United States government is alleging is that Pooh Shiesty, along with his associates, were conspiring to commit crimes uh, in waves. So it was a group of people who were basically working together, conspiring, planning to commit these crimes for some sort of gain, whether it's money, whether it's status, whether it's revenge or whatever it was, they were working together on at least three occasions to commit these crimes. Pooh Shiesty pled guilty to conspiracy. By pleading guilty to conspiracy, he then implicates his co-conspirators but it's not a it's it's not a uh it's not a, like a forward implication you know when you when you sign that paperwork when you sign that guilty plea the united states government actually creates their story they say hey this is what we believe happened this is what we believe we could prove in court and when you sign that paper and say i'm guilty you are admitting in open court to all of the things that they allege some of the things could include other people being involved most likely due to counsel by his lawyer uh does you know he wants to do his jail time he wants to you know get this thing past him as quick as possible so that he can get back to his rap career sometimes that means pleading guilty sometimes that means well i'm not going to fight the case i'm not going to take it to trial i'm gonna plead guilty I'm going to get sentenced. I'm going to do my time. I'm going to get back to my music career. He told the judge, hey, judge, I did it. But the government said, well, if you did it, then these other guys did it, too. Um, that's what they're alleging in their paperwork. If a guy like WAC 100 looking for something to latch on to, looking for some sort of publicity, when you fight in a case with co-defendants and say one of them decides hey i'm gonna cooperate hey i'm gonna you know uh, aid the government in the prosecution of my friends they'll usually split that case off they'll usually say okay you know the lawyer will say hey we want to separate from the co-defendants i want my client to be tried based on the fact that he cooperated with you guys and committed the crime so he'll have his own trial then he'll cooperate on everyone else during their trial that's usually how it works at this point Pooh Shiesty is still he still has two co-defendants his case has not been separated from his co-defendants they're all basically in it together just because he hasn't yet been sentenced certain uh, documents aren't available um his pre-sentencing investigation papers are not available in those papers his lawyer would say hey my client cooperated with the federal government based on that cooperation he should receive less time that's when you will see it right there in the PSA right now everyone's making their statements based on this proffer this you know statement of facts uh, that was written by the United States government. And then again, like I said, it was signed by Pooh Shiesty on January 4th, 2022. Now, 10 days later, Pooh Shiesty's co-defendants also pled guilty. They're also scheduled to be sentenced in the coming future. One thing when you're dealing with a co-defendant case that actually sticks together, where the co-defendants have different lawyers, those lawyers will be in constant communication with each other because they're basically fighting the same case. They're just representing their prospective client. A few years ago in the case of Bobby Schmurter, the state of New York really wanted Bobby. And they were using his friends and Rowdy and all these that they were using them kind of as bargaining chips in order to secure the, the, you know, the conviction. Um, in the case of Bobby, he took more time to ensure that his co-defendant received less time uh, and that was something that everybody applauded him for. From looking at the documents and from looking at, you know, the the the, uh, the docket and how it's been going and then looking at uh, the press release, it seems that Pooh Shiesty did something very similar to that. I would be surprised if the lawyers of the co-defendants did not have previous knowledge that Pooh Shiesty was going to plead guilty. This is what he's going to plead guilty to. It may implicate your clients, but the goal is that they all plead guilty and receive the least amount of time possible so that they can get out and get back to their lives. You know, Pooh Shiesty can get back to his music and his case. So the fact that he hasn't been, you know, his case has not been separated from his co-defendants. His co-defendants pled guilty right after he did. 
that's usually what would occur. The the government wants Pooh Shiesty. Once they get him to agree to admit certain things, now they can sentence him. Once that is kind of cleared out of the system, now they can deal with his co-defendants who most likely are going to plead guilty also and receive, you know, maybe a little bit lighter sentence than Pooh Shiesty depending on certain circumstances. But that would be the reason why a person like Pooh Shiesty would plead guilty to a conspiracy knowing that that will implicate other people because those other people he's, you know, talking to on a regular and he says, look, man, this is the best way that we can get through the case we'll do our time we'll come home we did it together that's what it looks like to me a guy like whack 100 is taking that he's not talking to the co-defendants he's not saying hey did y'all know that push ice was gonna do this is this something that you guys worked out together and to be honest he can't do that because they haven't even been sentenced yet so you know right now it's quiet time for the defense uh, they, they just want to be quiet they want to they want the judge to be able to make a sound decision on their sentencing so there won't be any interviews but unless you talk to those guys and those guys tell you hey man we didn't know until he already did it and our names came up so then we just had to plead guilty too unless that happens you can't say that Pooh Shiesty snitched on anybody Pooh Shiesty snitched on himself he told on himself he told the federal government hey I'm guilty I'm ready to do my time and that's about it man and subsequently his co-defendants did the same thing so it seems that everybody's in accordance and whack 100 is just kind of like i said either he's gravely misleading people or he's doing this on purpose for publicity to make his rat artists look better for whatever reason he's doing it it's not the truth so like i said man hey it's your boy mx show guapo man we don't want to make this video too long y'all let me know in the comments man do you really believe who shiesty snitched on his friends or is whack 100 making stuff up as usual uh subscribe if you knew we really appreciate y'all rocking with us man the number one authority in street news man it's your boy mx show guapo man street certified news we out